I'm Michal Kicinski, I'm one of the co-founders of Mudita Company. I'm also co-founder of CD Projekt Company, authors of The Witcher and Cyberpunk games, GOG.com, Gram.pl and many other smaller projects. My childhood started uh, in the 70s, time Poland was, uh, was, uh, was deep in the communism. But it was, uh, it was a place where really was lack of lots of goods, like basic, basic goods. And the things like computers, TV, even washing machines were some kind of a luxury. And one of the things which came from Western countries were the computers. And I was probably like seven, eight years old and I really uh, get fascinated and had this strong impression, even, even though I was a small kid, that this is like a, it, it's, it gives such endless possibilities and can improve life so much. And I get fascinated uh, by computers. So my dream was to have my own computer and I was like uh, at that time probably nine or something like that. And just to give you a perspective to my parents, uh, they were both teachers, so teachers were not well paid anyway, but uh, they, they get the salary like 30, 40 dollars a month. So the, the money like, was like okay to cover the basic needs, and, but nothing more. And having the savings like 100, 120 dollars, that was the price of the computers at that time, like Atari or Spectrum, uh, was something like absolutely unimaginable to, to have. I was determined to get the, to get my first computer. Getting hundred dollars for a kit was something like really uh, unbelievable. How to how to make it? I started working as a kid, even though I was like ten years old. Uh, we were gathering paper and bottles uh, around the, around our uh, place where we lived in Warsaw. But I was good in saving, so the, the pile of the money was growing, growing, growing. And one day, I think after a few years, uh, I bought my first used uh, computer. I think at that time the, there was no official software uh, market in Poland at all. The, there was no even copyright law, so, so it was allowed to copy software. It's something we uh, have a hard time to imagine those days, but uh, the place to exchange the software were, were something which were called computer markets. So people were meeting in the schools and they were exchanging the software and there were guys also selling the software. I was all my life good at, uh, at business, even though I was very young, so I found the opportunity that uh, actually I can sell some software. So on this one tape recorder, I was copying the software. It was huge pain in the ass because recording one cassette it takes like hours so I was preparing like I remember like four cassettes I was renting the table like a small school table in the corridor of the school where the computer market was organized and I was doing the business I was selling the cassettes and I found that it was much more actually effective than I don't know gathering bottles or something like that I was not so good at school because my attention was more in the computers than, than in the school so every year I had a, uh, worse grades actually so, so, so finally I haven't finished my high school. My interest in the computers grow. The business started growing. Uh, I had a bigger, bigger booth, not one table, but few tables. And then I started employing my friends from, the, from my uh, primary school to help me. And uh, I was a small businessman. And, uh, and at that time, actually during weekend, I could earn a few times more than my parents during the, uh, during the month. When I was in the first class of high school, I was like probably around 13, 14 years old, I was already not the best student. I was pretty lucky to get to this very good uh, high school, one of the best in Warsaw. But I already knew that uh, I need some good strategies to survive. So first what I did, I sit in the last bench, the, the, the farthest from the teacher, of course. Uh, for me, that was an obvious choice. And Martin came a little bit late and uh, and he was looking for the place and the only free place was next to me. We shared the same pa passion, which were computers. Marcin at the time, he, I had the Atari and he had the Commodore. And one of the hobbies of Marcin, which he has till today, is to learn foreign languages. And, and he really learned good English. So uh, he was in a very good position to be in touch with the, with the people from abroad. And he started downloading the software. And I, I had my booth on the computer market. So, so it was quite, uh, quite natural business setup. 
And there was a bigger and bigger pressure from international community, from the country, to, for, on Poland to introduce the copyright law for software. And I was like, no, no, I don't want to break the law. I mean, it was fun, it was good, it, it gave me a lot of money, uh, as for the teenager, but I didn't want, want to go in something which would be criminal. I, I, th I thought it's, it's too far. Uh, we were thinking with Marcin, okay, what to do next? And Marcin, Marcin came with the idea, he showed me the CD, uh, CD-ROM, and he told me, like, Michal, it's seven, more than 700 megabytes of, of information. In June 1994, we decided to, to establish the company. Uh, the name came by itself. We imported CD-ROMs, so it was CD Project. The name exists till today, of course. And we started importing more the CD-ROMs. We started importing them officially in the name of the company. And that's how we started building the company, step by step. But thanks to our determination in late 90s, so the project was really well known in Poland uh, because we were the first company who introduced the so-called full localization of the titles. But we as a gamers always, of course, wanted to make our own game. And we immediately thought about uh, the books of Andrzej Sapkowski, of which me and Marcin, were, we were very big fans. That was super natural for us. We, we grew on those books as, a, as a teenagers, and we felt that this world and these characters are absolutely perfect for computer games. So Witcher 1 was a very ambitious project for us because we never did the game before. So we were gathering the team, we are gathering the experience, and also we really did like extensive work to make the game known abroad. Uh, we are a small company from Poland uh, making its first game. But the most important fact that was that the brand started to be recognizable. And we, were, we started being respected as a creators, developers of a good RPG game, big RPG game. And that gave us good foundation to, to create the next part, Witcher 2, which was actually done during the time of the crisis. But it was even bigger success than the Witcher 1. And this built the big foundations to, for the success of Witcher 3, which was the most remarkable. Unbelievable commercial success and also uh, unbelievable success in terms of the quality of the game, like setting the benchmark for the role-playing games, I think, till today. Building CD Projekt, it was a huge project. For me, it was 18 years of very, very like intense work. I, I actually dedicated, I think, like most of my energy to CD Projekt. Uh, I had no family and uh, not many hobbies, so most of my time was consumed by, by an energy and effort was com consumed by, by running the company. I suddenly found myself on the list of the most rich polls, surprising and, and something I never really hoped for, uh, awarded as the Entrepreneur of the Year uh, by the Ernst & Young Company. But it all comes on the expense, and in my case, pretty big expense. I was actually looking for something which will help me to reach like inner balance, which I was missing when I worked so hard. So that's why I decided to quit, make a break, uh, after, after 18 years of working in the project. My first uh, meditation uh, experience came in 2010. Uh, it came to me through Marcin's wife, Renata, who discovered Vipassana meditation. And at that time I was quite exhausted. It was the time in my life for, for a quite long period I had insomnia. Uh, I couldn't sleep much. I slept usually one, two hours a night, but I had no time too much even to read the code of discipline. So I printed out everything to read it in the plane. And I remember I started reading in the plane and I was like, oh, God damn it. We wake up 4 a.m., we go to bed uh, 9 p.m. There was like no reading, no talking, no computers, no phones, everything give away. And that's the, the routine like that for 10 days. And I was a very good student on my first uh, Vipassana course. I really followed the instructions su super precisely and I was very dedicated because I had a feeling that it really might help me a lot. And finishing this course, it took 10 days, I feel like a brand new person. That was something amazing. And it was a very big boost in, um, in motivation to follow the path of meditation because I clearly saw how good it uh, had, how much it helped me actually. Since then, the meditation is an is a important part of my life. And having this experience with CD Projekt, an experience with meditation, I started looking a little bit differently on the world. And, and 
I saw that so many people in a smaller and bigger degree suffer to the things I suffered. One of the, the ways I can maybe add something to the world is to supporting companies like Mudita, who is going to bring the technology which is more designed to be in line with, with the human nature, let's call it that way. And, um, and the other thing is, is to bring to life the places like here, uh, which is the space where people get a meditation retreat, yoga retreat and, and some self-development uh, workshops. We had uh, in the construction, it will take another five years, center in uh, War Warsaw itself, like more daily center to visit during the day. And we also opened up the place in Peru, Sacred Valley, high in the mountains, where we held the yoga retreats, usually for groups from United States, but actually recently from all over the world. One of the things I, I done kind of by accident was, was to start the vegan restaurant in, in Warsaw. It was a string of coincidences which uh, made this place being established. It's called Vega Guru. It's apparently one of the best, if not, not the best, vegan restaurant in Warsaw. We have a very good reviews. It's a place where we, of course, serve vegan, res uh, vegan food. Uh, so no dairy, no sugar, no milk, no meat, of course, no eggs, etc. Idea of this restaurant is to serve not only vegan food, but also healthy food. So, so we avoid like deep frying. Uh, we use only fresh products, of course, and we don't use sugar at all. We don't use wheat flour as well. So as you can see, there are like uh, the walls are, of, are made out of natural clay. We use the natural paints as, uh, uh, as well. Even outside the restaurant, next to the sign, there is a solar panel. So most of the light uh, in the restaurant comes from the solar energy. One of the things I don't like is the, the negative sides of the modern technology. I met quite a few people who shared the same observation. What's the influence of the mobile devices on the, on the human health? I've read enormous amount of research on that topic. My understanding is that uh, it is another factor which we add in the modern life, which is kind of a burden for the system. We have the burden from unhealthy food, uh, polluted air, polluted water, uh, unhealthy lifestyle, lights being turned on during the night, poor quality of sleep. So we have lots of um, things which influence our lives those days. And the mobile device uh, sending strong radio signals is also another, probably another thing which adds something to this load of the burdens we have. So my idea was to uh, reduce it as much as possible. So we decided to make it just a simple phone uh, with the smallest possible radiation ever. That's the one key feature. And the other key feature, which is absolutely obvious, is like, uh, let's make a device which makes people not sit in the smartphone so much. There is a bigger need of this counter wave of, of something which helps people to rest from the smartphone, from the supercomputer we carry in our pockets. If you look how the technical comp te technological companies operate, they too much operated by, right, let's say, engineers and uh, financial guys. And it does not really have uh, the final effect of the consumer-friendly products. So, we try to shift the focus and really bring something which helps people to be more, to have more fulfilling life, to be more happy. And mudita itself, it's a Buddhist uh, terms for empathetic joy. We hope that the sim simple products, reliable products, m made in that in mind, may a little bit help people to be more happy. And we believe that you might be more happy by being with other people, by living in the present moment, not being too much hooked to the, to the technology. Like, let's use the technology as a tool and not be used by the technology. And, and there is a quest how to make the devices which actually improve having joyful life, having fulfilled, fulfilled life. As a mudita, we try to find a way to support that.